These are the risk takers. Once a formidable hunting coalition of eight lions, this pride could take down a buffalo whenever they were hungry. Fortune smiled on them. But then, one day, fate turned against them. They would take on even the largest in a battle of the titans. They'd take risks, frontal attacks, wrestling the bulls to their knees. They'd collapse their prey forward, unlike other prides who will avoid injury and stay well clear of the sharp hooves. These were the bold lions of Duba, to whom the slashing points of a bull's horn were nothing more than an obstacle to be overcome with brute force. Buffalo country were like medieval duels in which they seemed invincible and the injuries took their toll. The pride withered away from eight to four, and finally, after this kill, just three. Country pride is doomed. By contrast, the buffalo are steadily building in strength. Within this seemingly chaotic mass is a surprising almost military organization. Kinship groups, like small regiments making up brigades, in their clans and herds. As they hone their weapons against trees and shrubs, they signal their aggression. Constantly reinforced bonds protect the young and bolster their group strength. The buffalo are more than just prey for lions. saving grace. Time and time again, when the lionesses separate her out of the herd, her clan rallies to find her. And it is here that the whole pride is needed to distract and counter, to face down the charging family and to outflank the injured cow. But not today. Three lionesses haven't shown up for the hunt, and the buffalo are getting stronger. The skimmer pride. Hungry again on the northern bank and with nothing to do. The cubs urge their mothers towards the channel, ready for another insurgent adventure. The mothers take the bait, even though they're wary of alerting the resting sorrow lionesses. This time, they bring their own male with them. Slightly younger than the old sorrow males, he looks ahead and swims on into forbidden territory.
now, in the tense world of a forbidden land, on the wrong side of the river, the skimmer cubs are intrigued by anything that moves. It's an exciting and prohibited world for them. Their mothers let the teenagers experiment with the porcupine. It could be a painful lesson. Lions are often disabled by their sharp quills. The barbed point will cause infection, and with lions that are constantly in and out of swamp water, these infections could kill them. But this play gives the cubs experience they need to have. Perhaps this is the day for teaching the cubs about life, even though it is a strange place to do it. The buffalo are an ideal canvas for that education. And this is what they came for. Sound carries forever here, especially the ears attuned to the one prey species they know well and the one signal of distress they know intimately. The cow is an easy target, but the herd has been emboldened by a wave of successes in seeing off such attackers. With each success, they develop more confidence. Their triumph further enrages them. And as it does, the scales are tipped against the splintered skimmer pride. There is a subtle power shift that sends the hunters fleeing for cover. It is a turning point in this relationship. With the pride scattered and running scared, now the buffalo have a real chance of skewering a lion at last. It turns into a chaotic scramble for safety for the surprised young lions. Far across the open grassland from the fleeing pride, one of the insecure teenage males is isolated. The herd has cut off his escape. The Zaro pride has heard the commotion. They're here. Skewer is always quick on the offensive, and slowly they appear from everywhere. Now they are united. The skimmer lions are too shaken by the buffalo's aggression to notice that the lions coming at them from all directions are not from their pride. It takes a moment to notice the fire in their eyes. The skin of pride has no heart for a fight. The strength of being on their own territory weighs heavily on the side of the resident males. Saro males focus on any foreign male, leaving the females to their own battles. This is male business now, one on one, or if possible, two on one. When these huge male 
must fight. It is at enormous risk to both. Even the victors have to guard against a stray light, a defensive swipe that could sever a jugular or slice open a fatal wound. Slowed down by the water, the cubs are taking a risk of their own in crossing. The incensed Saro females could easily cross right in behind them and take the fight to the far shore. So even though the odds are stacked in their favor, this attack is not driven to the point of death. This time their point has been made. This is our land and we will defend it. The boundary has been secured. extreme because at last they have a new set of cuts to defend. Hunters by nature, they seem to know what they are born to. Their play is a dress rehearsal for what will one day not be a game. And already, they smell of lion. It is a scent that drives the lead bulls wild. The buffalo are incensed by the wafting, invisible smell of lions, and they push deeper into the sorrow palms, stomping at any movement. Others have arrived, drawn back to their cubs by the weight of the milk they carry. And when they see the chaos around them, the low growls of displeasure begin. These are angry lions now, not calculating hunters. Flinging themselves at the buffalo takes them beyond the simple contest for food. Now they are enemies. When their thrusts are countered, the scales are tipped in the delicate confidence game that drives everything in nature. But any retreat would mean sacrificing their cup. Not these two mothers, not the twins. But when the mothers check for their cubs among the palms, nothing but a disturbing silence greets them. Only half of the cubs seem to have survived the buffalo onslaught. But then, from the safety of the palms, three more, and finally, all of them, come tumbling up. With only one casualty. Most lions recover well from the deep cuts they endure in their violent life, because of their thin skins and the dry climate. But in the swamp, injuries are kept moist and raw, open to infection. The twins decide as one to move the litter away from the aggressive herd of buffalo. For the injured cub, this may be the worst time to have to go on a long march, especially when the only way ahead is through water. A 
and as their whiskers touch the still unfamiliar water, they feel their future as swamp cats for the first time on their skins. It is a future that is extremely precarious for the whole tribe, not just the one lagging cub. With such extreme hunting, it's inevitable that at least one of the Tsaro lionesses will be injured or killed at some time. When that happens, the pride will be in desperate need of some of their cubs. It is essential that they keep the hunting numbers at the ideal eight or nine lionesses. This then is a precious cargo. swampy world they live in makes up an intricate part of the lion's hunting strategy, where the buffalo are slowed down. But it also wears out the lions. Both they and their prey are more vulnerable in the swamp. not accept failure. A charging buffalo doesn't strike fear in their hearts, it spurs them into a deadly game of attack and counter-attack, thrust and parry, a relentless duel. Blood has been tasted, and like some invisible thread, it will lead them back to the injured calf time and time again, day after day after day. For this is an island, surrounded by an intricate web of thick papyrus swamps and deep water to the south and west. The buffalo are unable to cross the fast-flowing and crocodile-infested rivers. And to the north, deep channels carved out by hippos make it difficult for the herd to swim to safety in that direction. There is no escape for the buffalo. When they do wade into the maze of channels that ring-fence Duber Island, they get entangled, confused, and ultimately are forced to return to the waiting lions. So what to us may seem a watery paradise is for the buffalo a deadly confinement, shrinking during the seasonal floods before drying out to a faded savannah where two great warriors rule. The males of the Tsaro pride. They are masters of all on this island, in particular the buffalo. They and their Tsaro females seldom let out of their sight. There is a significant new addition to the pride. Growing up against this backdrop of buffalo, he needs to be nimble and confident on his feet to become a Tsaro lion, a specialist buffalo hunter. Because lions are cooperative killers, he must also learn how to be part of the pride and obey the harsh rules that govern it. <laughs> Ha <laughs> 
He has a brief window, while under his mother's intense protection, to memorize the personality of each Pride member. The lone female is his first study. The mother's explosive defense only increases the tension in the pride and sets in motion a further and ominous isolation of the old female. As a sorrow lion, his world is now a world of buffalo. Slowly, the clicking horns and occasional bellows will become as common to his ears as the sound of floodwaters rippling on the sand. Each day brings him closer to the time when he'll be ready to propel himself into the midst of the herd, unflinchingly throwing himself just like his mother does, against the terrifying wall of horns. The buffalo has walked their own knife-edged path of survival, finding food and water, while all the time avoiding the dangers that will leave their bones scattered in the indignity of death. The buffalo are crossing back into his mother's territory. She has anticipated the path of the herd's return perfectly. Flush the herd and scan for the weak. This time she is alone, but she knows the gifts of this summer season, the newborn calves. Buffalo's senses, both of sight and smell, are well developed. Their hearing is excellent. These are intense and alert animals, but a sixth sense creeps through her now. She knows there is a lion nearby, and she knows it is coming for her calf. mother leads her dailed calf into the swamp, the sorrow lioness doesn't hesitate to follow. is iron-fisted determination in a female with a hunger and a cub to feed. It is the trade-off that Africa must make from time to time. 
Under the lion's inescapable surveillance, it is a constant effort just to survive. So each precious life that slips into existence in this game of life and death is a victory against the sentinels that scan the bushes for any sign of opportunity. Every delicate first step silently bolsters the herd against their decline under the relentless onslaughts they endure. Each wobble during the agonizing hour it takes to stabilize is a celebratory yell against the fates. And each successful birth is a tiny contract that keeps the system alive. The synchrony of births overwhelms the Tsaro pride with a flood of calves that outdoes their capacity to kill all the newborn. They're limited to what they can eat today, one calf at a time. Although many are killed, the majority of the baby buffaloes survive. As the buffalo start to move, the lions of the Tsaro pride feel their pangs of hunger begin to stir. Ahead will be a fast-moving game of life and death, for they must know that taking on a fully-grown buffalo with nothing but claws and teeth has to be the most dangerous game of all. On this unique Okavanga Island, with its one herd of buffalo and three prides of lions, one would expect the nights to be filled with blood-curdling bellows. But strangely, these lions seldom hunt under the cover of darkness. So night time is the herd's chance to slip away to the far side of the island, or even across the river if they can. The lion's diligence has kept the herd contained within the Tsaro territory for weeks. While there has been a feast on this side of the channel, there has been a famine on the other. The lions to the north, the skimmer pride, has been without food for too long, and now their hunger drives them through the water. They are nowhere near the size of the Tsaro lionesses but they have other skills. Now, the Skimmer Pride has to risk making an insurgent sortie. Just four small adult females with ten hungry and ineffectual cubs. They have to do this stealthily. They are taking a huge risk. If they panic the herd too early, the Tsaro females are bound to hear the chase and react. Too vigorous an attack and the cubs could fall under foot of a stampede. When a single female sees her target, the risk increases even more. The only option now is a frontal attack. This is almost suicidal. Incredibly, she fells an adult cow buffalo unaided. 
and drowns its muffled bellows in the water. Their desperation sees off any intruders. A hurried meal is all they can risk for now. To the south, the big Tsaro females are ready and waiting. In a sophisticated and well-honed tactic of herding the buffalo, they first panic them with a strange growling charm. The object is not to attack, but to stampede the herd into the water. Only then do they pick off the struggling young as they flounder out of their depth. It is Silver Eye who makes the first contact, dragging her prey underwater to deliver mortal wounds before the mother can retaliate and rescue her car. Then the hunt goes into phase two. Now, like sheepdogs, the lions herd the buffalo together, relentlessly pushing in. It is clinical, this constant probing for weakness, the following through the floodwaters for up to seven hours at a time. The lone female hangs back for a moment, but the cub is eager to join in, despite its instinctive fear of water. Water is an element that all Saro lions must conquer early to become what they are, true swamp cats. And then the stabbing attacks begin. Each attack weakens the spirit of the herd. This is the hunt they were born to. And this is when the blood races, adrenaline coursing through their muscles, throbbing in their heads. The young are jostled between anxious mothers and defensive bulls, and this is what the lions have been waiting for, mistakes. But given time and constant pressure, are bound to happen. This is what the masters have been waiting for. Each kill is eagerly observed from a distance.
ready to add more battle scars to his profile if need be, he is here to claim his battle. <laughs> The lionesses have come to accept this unchivalrous behaviour. It is their sacrifice for the protection that the males give to the pride. And knowing that the buffalo are about to escape across the river, they continue the hunt. The females that have run and hunted hard will need the next kill to be theirs. This kill must be large enough to both feed those that stayed back protecting the cub and sustain the lionesses that have been injured in this last attack. For the females, the next hunt had better succeed. The buffalo on this island have developed an unusual tactic for defense. It seems to baffle the lions. Under threat, they present an impenetrable wall of horns by simply dropping down to sleep. There are just a handful of hyenas on the island. When a new mother tries to move her cubs out of the way of the herd, she is well aware that she is being watched from both sides. She doesn't want to be caught in the middle of this battle. The unruly cubs had better head for cover. Lions will hunt down and kill hyenas even though they don't eat them. But these lions are focused on killing something edible. So for today at least, there's no danger. When the herd finally sets off, the lions slip into place. Only half the females are here today. Injuries from the last hunt have taken their toll, and the mother has gone off to search for her missing cub. Expert buffalo hunters that they are, the Tsaro females don't always get it right the first time. The remnants of the prize are hard pressed to outmaneuver the young male they have selected. Now, the real hunt begins. Defiant young bulls determined to make it to their prime are filled with the confidence that testosterone gives them. refuses to give ground to this handful of irritating lions. He will turn and fight another day. The buffalo are moving east again, out of the Tsaro territory. It is their chance to cross off the island. In their path, other lions, the pantry pride, look forward to their arrival. <laughs> 